Welcome to the Word of God Online. Today is October 23rd, 2000, 23rd, 2009. We're going to be reading John chapter 12 from the Living Bible, which is a paraphrase put out in the 70s and used by Billy Graham, of all people. That should say John chapter 12. Uh, six days before the Passover ceremonies began, Jesus arrived in Bethany, where Lazarus was, the man he had brought back to life. A banquet was prepared in Jesus' honor. Martha served, and Lazarus sat at the table with him. Then Mary took out a jar of costly perfume made from essence of nard, and anointed Jesus' feet with it, and wiped them with her hair, and the house was filled with fragrance. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who would betray him, said, That perfume was worth a fortune. It should have been sold, and the money given to the poor. Not that he really cared for the poor, but he ha was in charge of the disciples' funds and often dipped into it, uh, them for his own use. Jesus replied, Let her alone. She did it in preparation for my bur burial. You can always help the poor, but I won't be with you very long. When the ordinary people of Jerusalem heard of the arrival, they flocked to see him and also to see Lazarus, the man who had come back to life again. Then the chief priest declared to kill Lazarus too, for it was because of him that many of the Jewish leaders had deserted and believed in Jesus as their Messiah. The next day the news that Jerusalem was, Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem swept through the city, and a huge crowd of Passover visitors took palm branches and went down the road to meet him, shouting, The Savior! God bless the King of Israel! Hail to the God's ambassador. Jesus rode along on a young donkey filled with the which fulfilling the prophecy that said, Don't be afraid of your king, people of Israel, for he will come to you meekly, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples didn't realize at the time that this was a fulfillment of the prophecy, but after Jesus returned to his glory in heaven, then they noticed how many prophecies of Scripture had come true before their very eyes. And now, and those in the crowd who had seen Jesus called Lazarus back to life told everyone else about it. That was the main reason why so many people went out to meet him, because they had heard about his mighty miracles. Then the Pharisees said to each other, We've lost. Look, the whole world has gone after him. Some Greeks who had come to Jerusalem to attend the Passover paid a visit to Philip, who was from Bethsaida, and said, Sir, we want to meet Jesus. Philip told Andrew about it, and they went together to ask Jesus. Jesus replied that the time had come for him to return to his glory in heaven, and that I must fall and die like a grain of wheat that falls between the furrows of the earth. Unless I die, I will be alone, a single seed. But my death will produce many new wheat grains, a plentiful harvest of new lives. If you love your life down here, you will lose it. If you despise your life down here, you will exchange it for eternal glory. If these Greeks want to be my disciples, tell them to come and follow me, for my servants must be where I am. And if they follow me, the Father will honor them. Now my soul is deeply troubled. Shall I pray, Father, save me from what lies ahead? But that is the very reason why I came. Father, bring glory and honor to your name. Then a voice from heaven saying, I have already done this, and I will do it again. When the crowd heard the voice, some of them thought it was thunder, while others declared an angel had spoken to him. Then Jesus told them, The voice was for your benefit, not mine. The time of judgment for the world has come, and the time when Satan, the prince of this world, shall be cast out. And when I am lifted up on the cross, I will draw everyone to me. He said this to indicate how he was going to die. Die? asked the crowd. We understood that the Messiah would live forever and never die. Why are you saying he will die? What Messiah are you talking about? Jesus replied, My light will shine out for you just a little while longer. Walk in it while you can and go where you want to go before the darkness falls, for then it will be too late for you to find your way. Make use of the light while there is still time. Then you will become light bearers. After saying this, these things, Jesus went away and was hidden from them. 
But despite all the miracles he had done, most of the people would not believe he was the Messiah. This is exactly what Isaiah the prophet had predicted. Lord, who will believe us? Who will accept God's mighty miracles as proof? But they couldn't believe, for as Isaiah also said, God has blinded the eyes and hardened the hearts so that they neither see nor understand nor turn to me to heal them. Isaiah was referring to the Jesus when he made this prediction, for he had seen a vision of the Messiah's glory. However, even many of the Jewish leaders believed him to be the Messiah, but wouldn't admit it to anyone because of their fear that the Pharisees would excommunicate them from the synagogue, for they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Jesus shouted to the crowds, If you trust me, you are really trusting God, for when you see me, you are seeing the one who sent me. I have come as the light to shine in this dark world, so that all who put their trust in me will no longer wander in darkness. If anyone hears me and doesn't obey me, I am not his judge, for I have come to save the world and not to judge it. But all who reject me and my message will be judged at the day of judgment by the truths I have spoken. For these are not my own ideas, but I have told you that told you what the Father told me to tell you, and I know his instructions lead to eternal life. So whatever he tells me to say, I say. And that concludes John chapter 12 from the Living Bible. Just one of the most powerful chapters in the Bible, really explaining why Jesus came uh, to save the world, not to condemn it. And uh, I hope you enjoyed today's reading, and feel free to encourage others to come and watch the video or listen to the audio or read the text on the wordofgodonline.com again that is www.wordofgodonline.com and uh, give God praise today give him thanks for whatever he is doing in your life regardless if you see it or not give thanks for the most littlest things and praise God praise God for who he is and that he gave us Jesus um, as a as a way and a bridge to him and uh, we'll just wrap it up on that note.